Welcome back, everybody. This is Joe Astorino, CCIE number 24347. And in today's video lesson, we're going to be taking a look at binary numbers. We're going to take a look at exactly what uh, binary numbers are, what they look like, how they work. And then we're going to specifically be looking at how we do conversions from binary numbers into decimal numbers and how we go back the other way from a decimal number to a binary number. Now these are things that you will absolutely need to know for your uh, entry-level Cisco exams, your CCNA, your uh, CCENT, um, all very very important. So we will jump right into this here. First thing you might be asking yourself uh, from that introduction is why would this be important for me to learn? Well, like I said, uh, if you are studying for a career in Cisco networking, or networking in general, or really just anything to do with computers, um, or you're stu studying for a Cisco certification, like your CCENT or your CCNA, um, understanding binary and binary to decimal conversions is absolutely just fundamental to basically everything else you're going to do uh, throughout your career in this things like IP addressing, understanding how those work, subnet masks, wildcard masks, prefix lists, and writing all those things is going to, or understanding all those things is going to go into writing security policies, access lists, um, and so on and so forth. And uh, it's just going to help you in so many more ways that I, I can't even begin to list them. Absolutely fundamental. And you will use these skills. Um, throughout your entire career so it's a very fundamental uh, building block to to everything else so let's get into binary numbers quick summary of binary you guys probably already know a lot of this stuff but computers at the lowest level they use binary numbers to communicate and to make decisions well you might ask yourself why well computers when you look at really how a computer works it's based on digital logic and that digital logic is really based on things such as voltage being either in the on position or the off position. So computers generally make a lot of decisions based on two different states, either on or off. Because there's only two different states, okay, uh, binary, because there's only two, uh, two possible values for each thing, we're only dealing with two different values it makes it very convenient for things like computers because they deal with that on and off mentality. Now when we look at binary numbers all it is is a different language, a different way to represent the same exact numbers that we represent every day with our decimal numbering system. So for example um, I can go up to you and I can say hello or if I'm going to speak German, if I'm going to speak a different language, I could say Guten Tag, right? They mean the exact same thing, but they're communicated in different languages. Same thing with binary and decimal numbers. Same exact thing, we're communicating the same thing, just in a different way. Now, binary uses what we call a base 2 numbering system. Just a fancy way to say that there's basically, or there, there is, only two possible values for uh, for every digit. Technically you'd call it a bit for every bit. So every bit can either be a zero or it can be a one. Those are the only two possibilities and uh, that's why we call it a base two numbering system. Whereas with decimal, okay, we call it a decimal numbering system because each we can have up to uh, ten values, right? Zero through nine. So that's a little summary there of binary. Now in order to understand binary let's go all the way back to school when we first learned about basic counting and I think it will help you in the long run understand how binary works so if you remember back to like the first grade you might not have got into the hundred thousands in first grade but back then you probably saw a chart similar to this where really you're reading it from the right to the left you've got your ones place your tens place your hundreds place thousands place ten thousands place hundred thousands place so on and so forth and you keep multiplying by 10 right so if we wanted to write the number 142,613 we could say that we have a one in the hundred thousands place 
we have a 4 in the 10,000s place, we have a 2 in the 1,000s place, a 6 in the 100s place, a 1 in the 10s place, and a 3 in the 1s place. Put it all together and you get 142,613. Notice that in every single place holder here, we could have a possibility of 10 different digits. Right? I could have 0 through 9 here, 0 through 9 here, 0 through 9 here, and so on and so forth. Notice also that the places, we start with the ones place and we keep multiplying by the base. We're in a base 10 numbering system. So 1 multiplied times the base, 10 multiplied times the base, 100, so on and so forth. Now, binary works the exact same way, okay? Except now we're dealing with a base 2 numbering system where every bit, instead of having the possibility of 0 through 9, Every bit can be a 0 or it can be a 1, and that's all we have. Now, because it's base 2, we still start with 1 in our chart. Take your 1 times the base. Remember, the base is 2. So 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times the base. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. 32, 64, 128. You guys get the idea. So if I took the decimal number 140, okay, we could say, if we wanted to go to binary, I would have a 1 in the 128th place, a 0 in the 64th place, 0 in the 32s, 0 in the 16s, a 1 in the 8th place, a 1 in the 4th place, 0 in the 2s place, and a 1 in the 1s place. So really what we have here is, right, 128, plus 8, 128 plus 8 gives me 136, plus 4 gives me 140. So notice again here, in every place, we can have just two digits, because it's base 2, and the places start with 1 and keep multiplying times the base. And you can really do that with any base numbering system. It just so happens that binary is a very important one with computers. So let's look at some practical real-world examples here. We're going to be working with 8-bit numbers because in the Cisco world, usually you're dealing with IP addresses for this sort of thing, and IP addresses happen to be broken down into 8-bit chunks. So let's take a look here. Let's say we wanted to convert the number 128 into binary. Well, step one, we're going to write out our places here. So we've got our 1 multiplied times the base, right? 2 multiply times the base 4, write out our placeholders. And then in step 2, we just have to decide, do we need a 0 in that place, or do we need a 1? Only two possibilities, right? So in this case, pretty simple one. In the 128th place, we need a 1. And that's it. That's my answer. I've got 1 followed by 7 zeros, because I don't have any of these other placeholders. I don't need them. I already have my 128 right here off the bat. So my answer here would be 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Take a look at example 2. How about the number 47? We we'll write out our chart, and then we just simply plug in a 1 where we need to. So we walk through here. If I put a 1 in the 128th place, I'm going to go way over 47. Same thing with 64. 32, I can do that. Okay, add in 32. Now what's 32 plus 16? Well that's going to give me 48, I'll go over. So I have a 0 in the 16th place. 8, 32 plus 8 is 40, so I'm good there. How about the 4s? 40 plus 4 is 44, plus 2 is 46, plus 1 is 47. So my final answer, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. Do a few more of these. How about 255? The highest possible 8-bit number. 255, really? 128 plus 64 gives me 192, plus 32 gives me 224, plus 16 gives me 240, 248, 252, 254, and finally 255. I'm actually missing a 1 there in my slide. There's only seven ones there, but there should be eight. And finally, we have 81. So again, we go through here. We can't do 128. That's too high. 
we'll have a 1 in the 64th place. We'll have a 1 in the 16th place. That gives me 80. And finally, a 1 in the 1's place. Final answer of 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Now, what about going back the other way? Equally as important. Let's try to take this number. 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. Might look a little scary when you're first learning it, but just break it down. Write out your places. So here's our binary places. And all we have to do is go through and add up our numbers. So we have a 1 in the 128th place, a 1 in the 64th place, a 1 in the 8th place, and a 1 in the 1th place. Add up all those numbers, we're going to get 201. So that number in binary is 201 in decimal. Same exact number, just two different ways to communicate it. One's in a base 2 numbering system, one is in a base 10. Take a look at this one here. 00101100. Well, if we break it down into our places, it gives us a 1 in the 32's place, a 1 in the 8's place, 1 in the 4's place. Add those up and you're going to get 44. Take a quick look at two more. How about 10101010, where we're just alternating? Well, no different. Line up our numbers. We have a 128, a 1 in the 128's place, a 0 in the 64's place, a 1 in the 32's, 0 in the 16's place, 1 in the 8's place, 0 in the 4's place, a 1 in the 2's place. So all the places we had a 1 add up to 170. And finally we're going to do 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. So we've got a 0 in the 128th place, 0 in the 64th place, 1 in the 32th place, 0 in the 16th place, 1 in the 8th place. So now I have 32 plus 8, gives me 40. I have a 1 in my 4th place, so now I have 40 plus 4, gives me 44. And finally I have a 1 in my 2's place, 44 plus 2 is 46. And that'll be your final answer there. That's about it for today, guys. So remember, binary numbers, binary to decimal conversions, decimal to binary conversions, very, very fundamental in your uh, CCNA studies, CCENT studies, and throughout your network engineering career. Now, we're going to be building on this concept here in future videos when we do look at things like how IP addresses work, what they really break down to, what they look like, and what they are under the hood. And we'll be looking at this throughout a bunch of these videos when we get into not only IP addresses, but subnet masks, summarization, wildcard masks, access lists. Like I say, you name it, binary probably has something to do with it. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter at JSTorino, obviously here on the YouTube channel. And check out my blog over at AstorinoNetworks.com. Lots of great blogs coming your way on all levels of the Cisco uh, training curriculum, all the way up to the CCIE. Until next time, guys, keep studying hard.